But what about making your business visible? How are you going to get some traffic through the doors or onto your website? How are you actually going to reach the people with your fabulous widget? Because if we're not reaching people, we just get carried away with our own fabulosity and nothing much happens. So I want to suggest to you that people's skills and the ability, I can't wait to hear what you've got to say, Ari, because if you have confidence to be proactive, the key to a leader's life is they're proactive, not reactive. The proactivity says, I need to be everywhere where my business is. And if you have a virtual business here today, I know that can be a challenge in actually juggling the balls to stay in touch with people. But I'll just say to you that whatever you attract, you don't need to pursue. And some people work way too hard because they're pursuing instead of attracting. And so in the development of your people's skills, of the vision, whatever is on the inside, you are speaking what is in your heart. You are speaking what is absolutely ingrained in your psyche, in your mentality, is what is coming out of your mouth. So wherever you are, right now, we're in an environment where we're actually strutting our stuff, prospecting. People are looking at us and saying, do I want to do business with you? So what is compelling about your story? Perhaps three ways that you can think about your story. Make it clear. Use as few words as possible to tell me what you do. When people ask what I do, I'm empowering the next generation to lead. How am I doing that? I'm setting young people up for their best ever career in life. How am I doing that? Through a 10-day live-in, flatting slash university experience to equip these young people with whatever they need to be responsible, to be independent, to be successful. That's my pitch. So your pitch has to be clear. It has to be colourful. Give me colour. Give me words. Make me excited by your conversation. Because great presentations are preceded by great conversations. Give me rich, colourful, clear, compelling conversations. And then I will listen to your presentation. Do you know how many times you need to be sharing your story every week, every month, in order for your business to work? Do you know? Because that will be a great discipline tool for you when you get all carried away and think you're doing things that are productive and you're not really, and it comes down to is how often are you telling your story? Jan Carlson was the CEO of Scandinavian Airlines and he coined this phrase, moments of truth. And it was really just to demonstrate the times that people come in touch with you or your business and they make a judgment. We all say we're not judgmental, and we all are. We're all very judgmental. We formulate uh, uh, judgments very, very quickly. And people do it on us and our businesses all the time. And Tom Peters writes about it when he describes a passenger on an airline who pulls down his tray when he gets on the plane and sees a coffee stain on that tray. And immediately he projects that judgment to the engines. And he asks himself, do they have systems that look after the engines that are as weak and poorly monitored as how they clean this plane? So let me ask you, what are the gateways to your business? What are the gateways that create the moments of truth where people will judge you and decide, do I even want to hear this compelling story? They don't know you've got a compelling story if you never get to tell it because they've cut you off by the way you shake hands, by the way you do or do not have eye contact, by the way that you smile, by the way that you use their name. How hard can it be, people? How hard can it be to answer a telephone and say who in the Sam Hill you are? But not only you. How many times have you rung a business and thought, why do they keep that receptionist on? Do you not think that the boss has never rung his own business? It's a good thing. Ring your own business. Find out. If you have staff, how do they come across? Are they chewing gum at the reception? Is the front doorstep shabby? Does it need a sweep? You will not believe it's the coffee stain on the tray that 
people check to see if they want to actually part with their money and do business with you. So who are the gateways? Where are the places that you could be letting yourself down? Let's talk about the valuable leader. This is the technician. This is your offering. What is your offering? Can you tell me what your offering is? As opposed to your overall business, what, what is it? What is it that you've got that you'd like me to part, money, part with my money for? Do you know? So you're the one that brings the value into your business, or you, that is the value. So here's a, here's a good thing to ask yourself. I believe that people can do business for one reason, but they continue to do business for another completely. And they'll, you'll say that. It's, it's to be able to retain your business is the greatest compliment you can ever have. To get the business, you either had a compelling story or you're very good at selling or whatever. But to retain the business is another thing. So here's the value exchange. When the buyer is getting value for money and the seller is being rewarded for effort, and I'd like to ask a question here, right now, on you as the seller. How many of you have ever felt unrewarded for your effort, for your investment? Yep. Okay, we'll come back to that in a little bit. I find women particularly, whenever I've done conferences where there are just women, I'll say something crazy like, how many of you girls think you do a great job? And they all throw up their hands. I said, how many of you love your business? They all throw up their hands because they're networking like crazy and they want to appeal to each other. Oh, I love my business. Oh, I just love it, just love it. Okay, I say, how many of you, just love it, how many of you believe that you're being paid what you're worth? Do you know how many hands go up? Almost none. And I said, well, I can tell you right now, sister, that if you don't get that balance right soon, now, we all take time to get a business established, but I'm talking about long term. I'm talking about cottage industries and all these little businesses that were a fabulous idea and five years down the track, we're still making 30 grand a year. If you don't change that ratio soon, you are going to hate your business, but I'll tell you who else you're going to hate, yourself and your clients. So if you've ever heard yourself saying, this isn't damn well worth it, Martha, well, something has to change in the value equation. Now, maybe your clients are not getting value for money. And I'll tell you what, this is something that I'm asking myself constantly, because to come on Mioma is just under $3,000. It's a 10-day, fully live-in, everything's paid for. Food, accommodation, outings, USB stick, manuals, books, you name it, 20 presenters come in, 20 experts in their field in New Zealand come in and present on this program. It's unbelievable what they get. They get a 90-day mentor afterwards, a one-on-one 90-day mentor that work, who works with them to help them to achieve the 90-day goals they set on the program. So I'm constantly saying to myself, is this worth the money? Because when I can say, yes, it is, then I can stand tall and say, and therefore, this entity is worth marketing as it is, and it deserves a return. Now, I'm a charity now, so that's an interesting thing. I don't own it. Whole different mindset. But coming back to where you're at, if you can say, I truly do bring value for money, then you need to know that you deserve a return because otherwise it's an unbalanced, unbalanced relationship. It's the same with your staff, by the way, because they're the seller and you're the buyer. So think about that too. Are they being rewarded for their effort and are you getting what you paid for?